Take a look at this. Scout ship setting sail. Hey, that noisy demon looks pretty strong. Think it might be one of those Code Red demons? Doesn't matter to me. I'd rather not waste my time fighting it if I don't need to. I don't see it as a waste of time. Look, the Abbey only has a handful of exorcists strong enough to take something like this down, right? Probably. I'd say Praetors like Lady Teresa and the Legates could probably take it on. And those guys are all your enemies, right? I see where you're going with this. The Abbey is strong, both in its individual members and as an organization. And if we're to close the gap between us and them, we need to fight strong opponents like this demon. That's what I would do. But you're free to make your own decision. All right. I'll concede the point. But we should determine just how strong it is first. I don't want us to bite off more than we can chew. That goes without saying. I'd rather not get myself killed due to inadequate preparation. You don't have to worry that much. If you want to go fight, I'll help keep you safe myself. I promise. I don't recall asking for your protection. You don't need to. I'll finish this quick. Hold on! Hold on! Your 
style is really unique. Just wait until I pull out the good stuff. Nothing special. This is my specialty. You'll love it. This is good. Try some. Oh, my God. 
It was a close one, but I am the victor. Whew. That thing was pretty strong. You just wanted something good to train on. I'm not in it just for myself. If I get stronger, I'll be more helpful in your battles. This counts towards the repayment of my debt. But you don't deny at least part of it was for yourself. Of course not. Every true swordsman wants to train so they can improve themselves. It might be a little late to ask, but what debt exactly are you repaying, Rogoro? My sword is my life. When I was separated from it, Velvet told me where to find it. Also, she broke me free from a 500-year-long prison sentence. You say that like it's an afterthought. And that's why I can't fully trust you. I don't follow. Us Rangetsu men are renowned for our sense of duty and commitment. Actually, now that you mention it, Rangetsu's a pretty unusual last name. I heard your family specializes in unconventional swords and fighting styles. That's true. Our ancestor was a swordsman from way off in another country who came to this land a long time ago. A foreign swordsman, huh? I guess that explains why your swords and techniques stand out so much. He had quite a hard time getting by in this unusual land, until he was taken in by an aristocratic family. Ever since, the Rangetsu clan has accepted the rule of their benefactors and has served them in repayment of their debt. Served them... as bodyguards? Bodyguards, assassins, spies, body doubles. Whatever the order, your family will carry it through. Always return that which you've borrowed, even if you must repay it with your life. That was our ancestors' creed. In truth, four of my five older brothers are dead. You have to admit, we take our sense of duty seriously. Yeah. All right, I get it. You and your family are all tied to your sense of honor. That seems to be the case. We can count on him. As long as he's on our side, at least. Oh, come on, that's not fair. Hurricane! Hurricane! Hold up! Hurricane! Hurricane! Hold up! 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 Hurricane! Hold up!
Sorry to cut you down. Get up a cop. Thank you. 
You're fighting the Reaper. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nothing can stop these fists! Take a look at this. Scout ship setting sail. Unarmed? Hardly. These are deadly weapons. Huh. What'll it take to make you go all out? Don't get overconfident. Jelly <laughs> Flash! But I'm just close. I want this! Form Zero! Come on, really? 
Close one, but I am the victor.
Nothing can stop these fists. Who's there? What on earth are guards doing here? Watch out! They've got Maliki! They're no ordinary cells! Make it like so! Here go!
Sheesh. What do you suppose they were guarding? A little lost lamb, perhaps. You think they're holding Mendy captive? Is there someone here named Mendy? We've come to help. Oh, thank goodness. I can finally go home. So they were keeping you prisoner. They made you mine vermilion ore? Yes, I discovered a method of refining it, and it cost me dearly. What's vermilion ore? A rare stone made of concentrated nutrients. It can be used in medicine, but it's also poisonous. Correct. So you were making medicine? Yes. They were forcing me to make a nutritional substance called nectar. Isn't vermilion ore supposed to be highly addictive? Uh, I told them that. But what choice did I have? Whatever. Our task is complete. Can you get back to Logris on your own? I can. I'm terribly sorry. Why apologize to me? We've done what we came for. Let's get back to the old lady. I hear Mendy made it back safe. That takes care of that problem. Keep up the good work. So, somebody means to ambush the Royal Medical Society on the Danan Highway. The Royal Medical Society is a group of doctors that travel around healing the sick. They're funded by donations given by ordinary folk. <sighs> Why would anyone attack them? Don't ask me. Some people are just twisted. And why would an underworld group defend them? Who knows? Something to do with the attackers, perhaps?
Out of our way! That's fair! That's our food! No break! Give it up! It's ours! See this? One, two! So the attackers were demons. I guess that's why they needed us to stop the attack. The doctors? Looks like they ran off. It appears they were after this stuff. Medicine with the cathedral seal. That scarf, did that belong to the attackers? Yeah. All three were wearing them. Does it mean something? They were just demons. Aggressive ones who attacked the innocent. We've finished all the jobs. Let's get back to the old lady's tavern. <laughs> you sure do like that Mabo curry. Uh, do I? Don't ask me. You didn't think it was tasty, Velvet? Couldn't tell you. Huh? Food doesn't hold any flavor for her. According to Velvet, she can never feel sated, and the only thing she can taste is blood. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh. What's the matter? You're gloomier than usual. Am I actually useful? Huh? You can cut down any enemy, and Aizen can beat them up. Velvet is strong and can eat anything. Hmm? But I'm not good at fighting, and apparently I'm always gloomy. Is that what's bothering you? In a fight, offense alone isn't everything. Hurting your foes means nothing if you don't live to tell the tale afterwards. Your healing arts are what let us always fight at our best. He's right. Compared to dead weight like Mogilu, you're plenty helpful out there. Only compared to Mogilu? I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying she never helped at all. Oh. You're not going to grow overnight. Be patient. Huh? You've only just been set free. That you've even managed to keep up with us this far is a feat in and of itself. Strength comes by continually improving your mind and body. Keep your spirits up and keep working at it, and you'll get there before you know it. I will? The drive to improve is what's important. Right.
take a look at this. I knew this would be big. What a treasure! Scout ship setting sail. By the way, those folks we just passed were talking about us. What were they saying? They were warning each other to be careful, talking about the demons that burned down Helavis and destroyed the Seagate Fortress being near the capital. Considering how bold we've been, everyone's still fairly calm about it. We'll be famous soon enough once we kill the world's savior. Sounds like that could get fun. Fun? Why? The people trying to capture us will put prices on our heads and put up wanted posters everywhere. Depending on who draws the likenesses, each portrait can look completely different. You know what I'm talking about, right, Eisen? Aye. I've seen dozens of pictures of myself. Some make me a monster, others make me a handsome youth. It's fascinating, really. I hope I get a poster soon. Then do your best to really stir things up. Right. I'll stir everything up good. Welcome back. That must have been hard work. How does marble curry sound to you? I also have our specialty peach pie on hand. We had a deal. Spill it. <laughs> Shepherd Artorius has gone north, up the Danan Highway, at the Abbey's newest temple, the Empyrean's throne. He is expected to be there for a while. Are they relocating there? In a sense, yes. They're holding a ritual to move the seat of the Empyrean Innominat. Innominat. In other words, the Abbey's new god. 
It is a very serious affair, so I imagine Melchior will be there along with the other High Exorcists. Suits us fine. I might even find him there. That will do. Somewhere in there we'll find a chance to strike. Perhaps. But be aware that security near the throne is on high alert. We'll manage to get through. No, you won't. You may be able to fool the guards, but there's no tricking the barrier they've put up. They've used arts to erect a giant wall, keeping outsiders away. But they have to get through themselves. That implies some sort of key, right? Yes. In fact, one of our people is looking into that as we speak. However, I'm afraid... <laughs> It'll cost us. You learn quickly. And here's the bill. Okay, now we're really not being nice. Consider it done. Aren't you going to ask why you have to kill a high priest? I imagine it's because he's the one controlling the nectar supply. The Church is the sole producer and distributor of a highly addictive substance. They rake in huge profits, while the common man, along with your people, suffer for it. Does that cover it? You noticed your tasks were related. That was the real test, wasn't it? And you passed. No matter how skilled you are, you have to know more than how to swing a sword to earn my trust. Don't misunderstand my intentions. I'm willing to do anything, if it brings me to Artorias. I ditched my scabbard long ago. I see. So you are the embodiment of a bear blade. A more formal introduction is in order. I am Tabitha Baskerville, leader of the Bloodwing Butterflies. I'm Velvet. Tell me about the High Priest. Each evening, he prays for protection from calamity at the royal villa on the Castle Logris grounds. Tradition holds that the High Priest should be alone for the prayer. That would seem the best time to strike. How do we get into the villa? Carry this insignia with you, and allies of the Bloodwings will offer you their aid. We'll hold up our end. Just find out about that key. Ah, <sighs> uh, Velvet? Are you okay? It's nothing. But you seem... I said it's nothing! Uh Sneaking into the castle will be an all-night job. Let's take this time to get everything ready and then rest at the tavern. Yeah. High Priest Gideon will be alone at night. Rest up, and talk to the Tavern Keep when you're ready. The Shadow Guild... Operates this tavern. It's been that way for generations. The red scarf is a symbol of the Bloodwing Butterflies? Aye. You seem to know a lot. Show that insignia to a person in a red scarf, and they'll help you out. If nectar made from vermilion ore is so bad for your health that it was banned, why are they making it? They make it because it was banned. Huh? Just because the powers that be say a rule is for the greater good, it doesn't mean that everyone will see eye to eye with them. If Tabitha's Mabo curry was outlawed, would you really be able to never eat it again? I wouldn't like it, but if it's against the rules... Uh... <laughs> well, you'll get hungry no matter what. People want what they want. But anything forbidden is bound to be rare. And when things are rare, they become expensive. 
So that's why people make it. The world isn't a simple place. There's an underside to everything. An underside? Contract killers, secret weapons dealers, loan sharks that charge outrageous interest, pirates like me, the folks who offered us mooring for information, and the gilded helivies are all part of it. As are the people who dye chicks blue to sell them at a higher price, and the people who bet on alleyway bug fights. <gasps> and they'll come to you with a smile, so you can't let your guard down if you want to stay safe. What sorts of bugs do they make fight? That's the part that got your attention. We know for a fact that Captain Eifried was on the prison island for a period of time. And it's true that Melchior took him away. However, I'm afraid that is where the trail grows cold. In any case, we can be sure that the Abbey has him captive. But what could they possibly want with him? If their aim is merely to fight piracy, They'd publicly execute him, or try to lure you out, would they not? And yet they've done neither. Total silence. I wonder... Could it be they want to get their hands on the relics some say Eifried brought back from the far continent? The relic from across the sea? Have rumors of that strange thing been going around? It's possible. There was a certain relic that the captain was curiously taken with. Kept it safe. What was it? That's our business. I'll speak no more of it. But if that's truly what they're after, I highly doubt the villa is where they're keeping him locked up. That's not where they keep their torture implements. Quite true. At any rate, I thank you for sharing what secrets you could. I wish you the best of luck on your search for more information.
More. More. More! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. If survival is at stake, an elder sister eating her brother before he inexorably wastes away is not outside the bounds of reason. You needn't hold back, Velvet. Eat, Lafayette. No! No! The hell with you! You and your disgusting words! <laughs> What? Why? You were... You were shouting. Be more careful around me! You know full well I'm a demon! I'm sorry. Damn. Awake or asleep, it's all one long nightmare. Smashing objects together is destruction. Smashing feelings together is life. But objects, tools, so much easier to abuse and toss aside. What does that mean? It means break time is over. Time to get to work, sweetie. Good thing I showed up in time. Don't tell me you're coming too. Sojourn alongside the gloomy demon lady, and the exorcist controlling Bienfu is sure to appear. I told my own fortune, and there it was. Do your fortunes actually hold water? I've been in the castle before, you know. How useful to have Magilu along, they said in the future. Get in my way, and I'll give you the boot. It's the Viper's Nest. They're always watching. Yes, but therein lie shadows, too. Let's look for someone with a red scarf.
Let's see your papers. Checks out. This tunnel over here connects to the castle. It should put you inside the villa. giant crocodiles in those waters. Crocodiles? A croc's favorite meal is witches. All right, onward and inward. Everyone but Mogilu tread carefully. Some assassin's crew we are. The Bloodwings are a serious organization. I'm impressed that they know about this entrance. And they have agents on the inside to facilitate this little operation, too. They must have branches working all over the Empire. They've probably even figured out how to get cats and dogs working for them. Here's a juicy morsel about them. They make sure even their corpses go to good use. They what? Long ago, one of their agents stole into the castle. When the guards discovered him, they chased him to this very passage. He dove into the water to escape, and then... CRUNCH! Ah! A crocodile devoured him in one massive bite! All that remained was his arm, bobbing to the surface. From this, two important facts were learned. What were they? First, they learned of the existence of this passage. Second, they could serve crocodile meat in town. Crocodile meat rubbed with human blood becomes tender and succulent. Perfect for Mabo curry. Then I ate? If it's so tasty, I'll have to try it. Rubbed with the blood of a lying witch. That would hit the spot, I think. And it wouldn't even affect our combat strength. Hey, the kid's a wreck. It was just a joke to help calm him down. It was a joke? Yeah, I totally made up that part about the crocodile. Mabo curry is actually made from man-eating catfish who- Let's keep moving. Right. I'll get you for this, witch killers! Hey, look! The water level dropped! You don't think there are any alligators down there, do you?
Don't waste my time. Dark and light! Forget about it if I were you. Move it or die! protecting the people from demons, but there are demons right under their noses. Abbey's security is certainly lacking here. The whole point of building those massive walls around the city is to keep people safe inside. But if there's a demon outbreak on the inside, those same walls will make it harder for everyone to escape. The palace covers a lot of ground, so there are tons of hiding places. It wouldn't be hard for a demon to slip in through the waterway. I'm sure the Abbey is aware of that. Perhaps it's a trap made to lure intruders in. What? They lure demons in and then ignore them? Something doesn't add up. I know, right? Take a look at this. Scout ship setting sail. <laughs> 